I listened carefully to what we said last time, and I'm going to try to make some adjustments in how we do uh, the course. Uh, it, it won't be a, a miraculous transformation. Instead, it'll be a kind of a minor adjustment, uh, trying to do things a little different here and there. Now, necessarily, we're going to be doing some pretty complicated things, and there are going to be some pictures in today's presentation that you'll want to uh, download the PDF after class and study carefully, because you won't have time uh, to, to copy these elaborate figures uh, onto your notes. And so I, I would say to you, don't even try. Uh, instead, write something in the, as a kind of a note to yourself. Be sure to look at a picture which shows this and write a couple of words about it to remind you. But don't try to to copy the picture, you'll, you'll probably make a mistake anyway. OK, uh, we're going to review a little bit. We've talked about post sets and cover graphs. So here are three different post sets. But if you look at those figures, you can see them either as ordered diagrams of post sets, but you can also see them as just drawings of graphs. And if you think of them in the second setting as just drawings of graphs, then they are the same. They have the same ground set, and two vertices are adjacent in one picture, if and only if they're adjacent in another picture. So as graphs, those three pictures are the same. But as order diagrams, all three of them are different. And we commented last time that there are many other post sets on that same ground set with that same cover graph. Now, does that sentence that I just said make sense to you? There are many other post sets on the same ground set that have that same cover graph. OK. We also talked about comparability graphs and the complements in comparability graphs. So given a post set, you can form a graph on the same vertex set by saying two points are adjacent if and only if they're comparable. And when you take the complement of that and exchange edges for non-edges and vice versa, you get the incomparability graph. Now, it's worth studying this slide carefully to make sure that you understand what's going on in this. So for example, in the post set, A and F are comparable. A is less than F. They're not a cover. A is not covered by F. F doesn't cover A, but A is less than F. So in the comparability graph, A and F are joined by an edge. And in the incomparability graph, they are not. OK, question. Why is it the definition of a post set we use that the less than or equal to greater than or equal to, but when we're talking about comparability, it's only less than or greater than? Um, so in graph theory, there's a notion of a loop. And there's an edge which goes from a vertex back to itself. And it, if you do that, then you get loops. And loops are kind of messy. And um, sometimes there are situations in which more exotic graph theory structures with loops and multiple edges are of interest, but uh, not here. And so while it, we define the post set in terms of the less equal relationship, when we talk about the comparability, we only talk about it for distinct points. It's a, it's a semantic thing. So would they be comparable uh, only if it's greater than or less than and not if it's equal? That's correct. Okay. So, so uh, this, is, this is, again, uh, uh, I don't know whether you've heard this uh, conversation, but the question is whether a point is comparable to itself. And, and that's, a, that's almost like a semantic thing. Uh, yeah. You just got to take a, a, a notational convention and then stick with it. 
And, and so if you want to say to somebody, I always consider a point as comparable to itself, then that's fine. But you wouldn't have a no edge between yourself and yourself in the compliment. OK. That's probably many more words said about nothing than the topic deserves. But uh, 